Now, before we get to looking at these lights, seeing what they look like in operation and peeping the beam angles so you can see the differences between the lights, before we get into all of that, I have to reiterate and restate again. Do not let these guys that have sponsored channels where they get gear sent to them from manufacturers tell you that, oh, you shouldn't buy anything from China because all this stuff is made in China. If you look at the knockoffs that are coming out, knockoffs, you can see that it's literally the same chassis and some of the same equipment that the big boy manufacturers are putting out. You just have to find the person that has them made to spec. They have certain quality control setups and companies like Atkins Professional and Rasha and uh, 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 Rainbow Lighting. And there's another one that's in Dallas that I'm kicking myself that I can't remember. I know they have a display room or showroom in Dallas, or at least they did for a while. Hopefully they still do. Um, there are several brands that you can buy that are not as expensive as the big boys that will give you more bang for your buck and last very long, at the very least, long enough for you to recoup your investment on them and make several thousand dollars over what you initially spent. So don't fall for that nonsense. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these lights and uh, you guys can judge for yourself. All right, guys, so the first light that we're gonna set off the comparison with is the smallest of all the lights. This is the ADJ Par Profile Plus. It's the little fella. It is a RGB UV light. And before we get into anything, I do wanna give props to ADJ for seeing the foresight and maybe listening to some DJs on the road or lighting people on the road that say, you know, Sometimes RGB color mixing is good. Sometimes we need just a little extra kick. So if you've got to give us one other color, we don't want white, we don't want amber, we actually kind of want the UV. And they put one, you know, uh, UV bulb in the center of these lights. And when it comes to getting really good purples or really dynamic, high, high intensity colors like fuchsias and stuff like that that uv bulb just takes it up another notch so shout to adj for you know having the foresight to jump out the window for us and throw that in there that's pretty dope now let's talk about the bad stuff um the beam angle on this light is very narrow it not not just because of the size of the light but because of the types of bulbs that they use. I'm not sure what they're called. I just call them diode chip on board light style lights, um, uh, bulbs rather. And they do this weird thing. If you look at the bottom, do you see like right there where the light first hits the wall, the light shoots out like two feet on either side in this really low but wide V pattern. Then as you go up, that V kind of disappears, and then it goes into the actual beam angle, which is very narrow up top. Uh, I'm not a fan of this, especially when it comes to certain color mixing with these bulbs, because there's a lot of bleed through of colors uh, in these bulbs. So like at the bottom, if you were doing a red color or something, for example, you would see like pinks and reds and blues and stuff at the bottom but then in the actual narrow beam angle that goes up you see the color that you're actually trying to get and i'm really not a fan of that type of actual color mixing but you know for an 80 dollar light brand new i think that's what these were uh you can't really ask for too 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 much i mean you know you got to put a little bit more skin in the game if you want better color mixing with uh, what I affectionately call tri-LED bulbs uh, because back in the day, there were only the three colors that they put in those bulbs, but those are the types of bulbs, tri-LED I mean, that you're going to see on the rainbow and the Atkins light here in a second. Um, check out the beam angle. Very narrow, but if you've got like a six-inch column, four-inch column, you're doing a rustic barn where they've got like four by fours as, uh, you know, columns in the venue. These are really good for lighting those up. 
Uh, the biggest drawback to this light besides its color mixing is the fact that they don't offer it in a battery powered model. Um, if it was battery powered, these would just be amazing little accent lights to put in small places to give just an extra flash or like I said because of their small footprint to put in front of a column and have less of a worry about guests kicking it. And moving on we now have the ADJ Mega Gopar 64 Plus. Now this is the base of the light that I first used when I first started uh, in the mobile DJ business, I worked for a company here in Houston, Complete Weddings and Events. Shout out to Ron Ball uh, for putting me onto the game. But these were, this is the newer version of that light. This is what we used to use way back in 2013, I believe it was, uh, when I first started working for that company. Uh, RGB AWUV is what you get that's what the plus designation stands for on this light and the profile plus before it you get that uv uh bulb in the center and uh it really does help when you're trying to get a a, a darker purple uh to give you that with that extra kick of uv in there it really does help it also like i said helps on brighter colors make them even more vibrant um but as you can see at the very base, it has the same problem that the PAR Profile Plus has with that weird wide splay at the very base of the light. Um, again, I believe that has to do with these types of bulbs because you just do not see that with the tri-LED style bulbs. You just don't see uh, that weird splay at the bottom. And then we have our beam angle, which is obviously wider because this is a bigger light with more bulbs in it. But by comparison to the big boy lights, again, this is still a pretty narrow beam angle. Pay attention to the hot spots on the light. Uh, specifically in the main part of the beam angle, look at how the color washes, kind of sort of from left to right. In this video, uh, you're going to find that away from the hottest part of the beam angle, it just looks blue on the outside, but it is, I promise you, a teal color where it's kind of got that green and you can see it more so what the color actually looks like, what the room actually looks like if you look at the hot spot on the ceiling. Because that's where, you know, that's what the color really looks like more than anything in the room. All right, moving up, we are on the littlest big light that we have here. This is the Rainbow Smart 2 Mini. Uh, this light is a RGB AW uh, UV light. And it's got six tri-LED style bulbs, which basically just means that underneath each one of those six bulbs, there is a color chip for each of the colors that this light does. So there's a red, a green, a blue, an amber, a white, and a UV light bulb or chip underneath each one of those bulbs, which is why the color mixing is so much more natural and so uh, it's, it's cleaner on these lights than it is on the other diode style lights. Now, if you're looking at, you can see the wash is way wider on this. I mean, the wash, the beam angle on this light at its strongest point has to be two and a half to three times the width of, for example, the ADJ light. This light also happens to be wireless DMX. It also is um, battery powered and uh, it's got the fan uh, going and everything to keep the uh, fixture cool. Um, but this is the interesting thing about this light in particular. Uh, this light belongs to my friend DJ Noro. Shouts out to Noro. Uh, I think he said that he got these lights for like on sale for like $180 a piece, $185 a piece. The ADJ Mega Gopar 64 that I showed you before this was $150 brand new. It's nowhere near as toughly made as a light, that ADJ light, it's very cheap, uh, cheaply made. 
and it doesn't do all the colors and it's not wireless DMX. So depending on where you get these rainbow smart two lights from for 30 something to 40 something dollars more per light, I mean, you might as well go ahead and get the rainbows. There's only one issue that I have with this light. Let's take a look right there. See how much wider the hotspot is on the ceiling than it was with the Profile Plus and the uh, 64, MegaGo 64 uh, Plus. Yeah, it's a lot brighter light, a lot more coverage, much better wall wash. The only issue that I have with this light is, for some reason, a couple of the diodes are switched backwards. As we all know, the designation for these lights is RGBAWUV. On this particular light, it's RGBWAUV. They swapped the amber and the white chip, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. If I'm like using these lights in Congress with my lights, uh, it's kind of hard to use one board to do it because of that swap. Anytime I need to do any color that requires mixing in white or amber, I can't use my lights with these lights because of that offset uh, on the chipset. But besides that, amazing light. It's super small. You can pack tons of these in like a 27 gallon tub and they're not as heavy as the light that we're going to be showcasing next. So uh, take it in one more time. This is the Smart 2 from Rainbow, Smart Mini 2 from Rainbow Lighting. You might want to look them up and check them out. A very, very good uplight. I do recommend it. All right. This is the original Party Loud Events, Triple Triple OG, original Don Dada light for my company. This is the Atkins Professional RGBAW, no UV, uh, series light that I bought back in 2016, and uh, yeah, man, this is this is the the big dog. Still with the teal, as you can see. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I love. I have a love hate relationship with this light. I love it because the beam angle is super wide, uh, because the lights are super duper bright, but the issue that I had with the original light, um, just construction wise, is I hated that the antenna was set up on the outside. To this day, a lot of my antennas are pretty banged up, and... Um, yeah, I'm not the hugest fan of that. I'm glad on the Mark II to this light, uh, which I have six of so far, that they tucked the antenna away inside the frame. Uh, that was great that they decided to do that. Uh, there's not that many differences, in my opinion, between the Mark I and the Mark II. Uh, people at my events cannot tell the difference between, oh, this light looks a little bit different. So that's all that matters to me. Uh, this light is very heavy. It's big, it's bulky, it's heavy, and it's a little bit harder to transport, so to speak, uh, than all the other lights mentioned before. I have to move these things around in a like 50 gallon tote with uh, wheels on it uh, and a handle to kind of lug them around. And even there, it's like pulling around a 180 pound dead person. It's very, very heavy uh, moving these around. So while my eyes and the eyes of many of my uh, clients and their guests love these lights, my back and my legs absolutely positively hate them. In fact, in looking at these lights now, while this light is definitely brighter, higher up in the wash on the wall than the rainbow light is, I am seriously considering just getting a couple more of these Atkins lights, but the version twos, and then I'm thinking my next light is probably going to be, you know, that I buy in bulk is probably going to be some of those rainbow lights. 
because I can move so many more of those around than I can with these and the footprint is just smaller and all that good stuff. I still love these lights, do not get me wrong. I do love them. The output they put out is crazy. Uh, using them outside to light up buildings and stuff. It's a really, really good look, like I did at this one party here. But I'd be lying if I said at the end of the day that the weight of those lights doesn't have me running for the hills sometimes, depending on the situation and where I have to use them. I do not like to use these lights to light up columns because they throw off so much extra uh, light to the left and right of a 10 inch column that they can be kind of blinding. Um, I always have to shoo people's little kids away because of course uh, parents don't watch their kids at weddings and uh, these events and their kids come over and they literally look right down into the light and I'm like where is your mother and father? like? This is not a good look, my guy. I need you to move away, get away. Then, of course, you look like the bad guy, but I'm trying to save your baby's retinas, you know? So, again, Atkins Professional uh, uh, RGBAW. Oh, and for those of you that are thinking, why not the UV? They do make now, or uh, always have made a UV version. I just didn't have the money for it when I was starting out, man. And now these lights are cheaper. I don't even know if they make a non-UV version in the latest version of these lights. I think all of them are just UV now. I could be wrong. Because uh, even the Mark II that I have, uh, the six Mark IIs that I have, I got those a couple of years ago as well. So, yeah. Just, again, there are options out here uh, at between let's say 200 and 250 a light where you get battery powered um wireless dmx lights that straight up go head to head with and or put some of the big boys to shame made in china uh specked out by a company in america with quality control and design and you don't have to spend $400 a light to get a good light that will make you money for four or five years. Goodness knows these have. These have definitely been worth their weight, and it's a lot of weight, in uh, good old American greenbacks for your boy. So just something to consider when you're out here looking at lighting. Uh, do your due diligence, do your research, Rasha, um, uh, uh, Atkins Professional, Rainbow Lights. There's quite a few companies that have these lights already in America that you can get for a much more affordable price with a lot more functionality and universal usage than, you know, some of the big boys.